Hey guys! So I'm doing something fun and different today and my son really likes these Amulet series books and this is book eight. This is book eight and uh, he was asking me if I would do a channeled video with I. Cole, which is one of the characters in the book. The best I know about I. Cole, because I've never read it, it's spelled I-K-O-L, um, is that I. Cole is the amulet or is part of the amulet. This is what I. Cole looks like. I. Cole has two identities. There's this identity, okay? And then he also has 86, uh, almost there, this identity. Right there. This guy is also I. Cole. And I I don't have an exact explanation for why I need to channel I. Cole other than um, my son really would like me to do this today. So I'm going to. And we're going to just see what comes. I told him that, well, I've not read the story, so I don't really know I. Cole on any level other than what you shared with me. Um, but let's just see what comes. Um, and we'll just go go with it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and re relax here and get connected with this consciousness from the amulet books. I Cole, who is also interconnected with the amulet itself, and then let's see what comes, okay? <sighs> okay. It's interesting because already my spiritual atmosphere is um, relaxing significantly and even kind of a little bit shaky, um, but. I'm actually going to a place, all right? So my soul, I'm actually experiencing my consciousness is actually traveling somewhere, okay? So I just have to wait until I get to that place before I can know anything more about that. So I'm experiencing myself gravitating or traveling to a place right now. I seem to recognize I. Cole in my heart. I seem to know who this is. And where I. Cole is located is actually a really vast space, um, but it's like a cavern of its own kind. It's an actual location. Um, and it is, it's like a dustier looking thing, but you could imagine it like the Grand Canyon, you know, it's a lot of dust or it's a lot of canyon or it's a lot of rock that's compacted that creates this space. It's a lot of, um, you know, earth material. So there's a lot of compacted earth material that creates a location um, with a big triangular actually entryway and it's enormous. It's absolutely enormous. Um, but it's like dust materials compacted and it's really big. Whatever it is, is really big and I'm really small and I'm going towards it, okay? I say, I call, are you in here? I call, are you here? I'm saying that and it kind of echoes in here. I call sees me already, already knows that I'm here. Um, he already knew that I was coming a long time ago, even before I came. Like, he seems to see beyond time and space. So, I Cole already knows. But I'm sort of here as a human being asking, um, are you here? Like, a human being would think that, you know, you have to see me to know that I'm here. You got to hear me to know that I'm here. But I Cole actually sees beyond time and space. So, he doesn't even actually have to see me. Um, to, to even know that I'm present. Um, I've actually entered into his domain or his dimension. And he is a real consciousness, actually. I. Cole is a real consciousness. All right. So I'm in between two dimensions right now. One dimension is this, uh, this old space. Um, you could imagine it like the Great Pyramids. Um, they're just sort of a reflection of what was an ancient history or past. Um, so in this space, it's sort of like an artifact in its own way. But um, on another dimensional plane, it's a, it's a thriving space of his energy. So I'm somehow on a human level entering into a place that's kind of an artifact, like a, an Egyptian pyramid, although it isn't a pyramid. It's like walking into a giant cave and it's got a triangular doorway. Um, and it's enormous and there's light on the inside of it. It's not dark. 
Um, but in another simultaneous dimension, it's still alive. Like in another dimension, Egypt is still um, alive. Uh, this is still actively taking place in another dimension, another time and place. So that's what's happening right now. And um, the question is, do I want to cross dimensions? Do I want to cross between the human reality um, to go into I. Cole's world? Do I want to um, walk through the doorway of dimensions in order to communicate with his consciousness directly? Or can I communicate with his consciousness from this dimension, um, where I'm in the artifact of what was, but he's in another dimension? I'm actually going to ask my son's um, soul <laughs> what he would like for me to do. Okay, <clears throat> let's see. All right. It's a lot of deep heart feelings right now. And uh, the longing is for this dimension of higher awareness to merge with this dimension of the artifact because it feels like something is lost. And something old that is lost is a, sort of a sad thing, almost that we want to um, ignite or rebirth, uh, rebirth it, like bringing back um, some emanation of like the glory of Egypt in a way. Um, that's the only way I could kind of metaphorize this, um, to bring back something that was old um, and somehow bring it back so we could appreciate it again in a new way, something of this kind. Um, and I experienced from his heart a longing to actually um, access something that is old but not from that dimension but to bring that dimension into this one and to reignite something so let's see Nicole is smiling because he feels loved and appreciated Because his emanation could matter to somebody. He's very tall, actually. I see him in his world, and um, he's walking down a, a stairway, and there's a canyon-esque aspect. He's sort of um, got a really big chair um, in the center of a hollowed-out ground, and then a pathway that comes across um, this canyon, a sort of a rock everywhere, and he is walking towards me. Um, and then my son and myself are both standing here. He has both uh, the, the longing for activity and a connection with... Basically, as he walks towards me, as he walks towards us, I see what is a very sharp knife that cuts. Um, but he doesn't want to be the knife that cuts. He wants to be something else and but he's very tall like very tall and skinny actually in this experience of him he's very tall and skinny and he reminds me of dust it, like even he himself is a dusty color and it's sort of like compacted dust and i ask him if it how his heart feels and his heart has a swirl on it his heart does and he's uh, trying to rediscover his, uh, his consciousness, his own consciousness. And he's re rediscovering his own consciousness through um, the minds of the readers, through the minds of children. Um, this is how his uh, soul wants to rediscover himself from his dimension and our dimension and somehow merge the dimensions together while he's still sort of in a place of self-discovery or rediscovery. Um, so there's something about the connection of um, my son's inspiration, my son's curiosity about Icol, um, and Icol is longing to have those curiosities so he can self-discover, so he can, th um, so he can understand himself in a in a new way, and he's very appreciative of that. His actual soul and consciousness is very appreciative of that, and he even has a lot of honor um, and gratitude for this amulet series that his conscious could be um, a participant in this novel, that he would be gifted um, a new um, experience, a new enlightenment of himself. And it feels like his soul's been through a lot, to be honest. It feels like his soul's been through a lot and has actually been kind of um, disconnected from activity for a while because of what he's been through. 
and uh, so he's only stepping back into participant uh, to participation in the creative energies um, and you, I guess you could find it as reincarnation or whatever the, this is an interdimensional universe, you know? So he's, uh, wanting to be more actively participating. This part of himself is, and this part of himself is wanting to actively participate by being born into a story and then self-realizing through the ideas of the readers. Okay. And, um, he wants to tell me more. Uh, he has, he's a, he's a very old soul actually. Um, but he has a he has a heaviness about him, like a, um, a t like you could say it's tired or it needs time. Um, it feels like it just needs time. Uh, so and it's there's been a long time as well. So how much more time do you need? Because he's that tired, it he needs as much time as he needs. It's interesting in a world without time. How much time do you need? Uh, whenever the inspiration shifts for some reason, okay, so. He uh, wants to show me something. And it comes from a dream and a teardrop. And he shifts the way that this space looks. looks. So it's not canyony and uh, inside of a deep cave. Uh, he shifts the walls so there's actual writing on the other side of the walls. And so he just sort of turns the walls around and he shows me all these, like, you could say runes or hieroglyphs of their own kinds, but they're kind of like an alphabet, an unusual alphabet. And it's written all on the walls, this unusual alphabet is, but it's telling me something. There's something about this alphabet, but it's not necessarily... A story, it's magic. It has to do with magic. This alphabet does. And uh, the magic inside is located inside of the heart. And you'll never find the magic until you go within yourself, within your heart. I Cole says that. But he says the magic too can also be an inspiration of the mind. But uh, there's something about the love the inspiration of love um, that creates the magic itself. The mind can create the idea of magic, but only the heart can actually create the magic. The heart can actually create the magic. The mind can only f sort of fabricate the idea of magic, and the idea only has so much power, but the true power comes from within the heart, he says. I say, if the true power comes from within the heart, then what are all of these magical runes about on the walls? What's their purpose? Are there hearts in here? What is the purpose of this? He says, no, these are located within my heart. He's sort of like a teacher and he shows me a long ruler and he points at the, at the runes of this alf magical alphabet. Um, and he's showing a projection of what is written within his heart as these magical runes. Um, and he's sort of projecting it against the wall kind of thing. Uh, again, he's showing me two dimensions. One is Eichol's heart is a dimension. One is this space where we are in, this Eichol space where his spirit consciousness is located is a dimension. And this dimension is actually still in another dimension from the original one where it's the um, sort of the, the leftover, the ruins of what was um, a more physically dense uh, memory, like an earthbound space and uh, time has passed and now it's no longer. Um, but it, we can still preserve anything in an energy world because there's no such thing as time. So we're in a multidimensional experience. And so Icol is showing me that his heart possesses its own dimension as well as the space possesses dimension as well as so we're t we're looking at dimension 2. I love this guy, but I feel like there's a lot more to him than we know. So all we can do is go through the layers of what he wants to express to us. He's kind of distant. I tell him how much I appreciate him and I go to give him a hug, but he kind of like, eh, I don't know if I want a hug right now. And that's, that makes me sad because that means that a part of his heart is pushing love away. 
when really his heart needs love the most. And if he really wants to work with magic within his heart, then he needs to repair his heart in order to really work with the magic on the level that he wants to work with it. He asks my son, actually, how do I, how do you think that I repair my heart? How, what ideas do you have to help me repair my heart? He wants my son to think about that. He says, thank you. He says, thank you to my son. And then he says, thank you to me as well for caring about him. When he cries, the, he's made out of dust, and uh, the, the tears just kind of seep into his face, and I'm, I'm afraid he's actually going to dissolve into dust, because his tears create, his tears actually melt the dust, you know, uh, because water and dust transforms, the, the, it just ch it changes, he's standing upright, so the tears could actually make him go to the ground and just be a part of the, the canyon or this internal cave or whatever, and however you want to define it. He smiles and he says, I haven't cried in a long time. And crying helps to heal my heart. Because it inspires me to acknowledge that I am a man. I too am a man. And as a man, it's okay to cry and to feel sad inside. And the more he says this, it starts to rain on the inside, and I see all the dust wash away from him, and he's a skeleton standing here. And something about the activity of crying and the inspiration of this rain and the way that it washes the dust away from him, um, he's starting to develop a body or a form. Um, he's got muscle tissues developing. Um, he's becoming an actual human, a man, a human man. Um, organs and um, there is a, a echoing consciousness that is afraid of Ikul becoming a man and that if he releases from this space what he might do and I say we need to let go of our fears this man is healing this soul is healing and when this soul heals all of our souls heal and we have to trust in the experiences and we have to care about each other. And we have to remind each other about love. And we gotta trust that love has power. That love is beautiful and makes beautiful emanations of all of us. And we gotta give I Cole the opportunity to decide how he will choose to explore his identity in a new way. As this reborn man somehow that consciousness is also him and that's the conscious that is afraid of himself and that conscious enters into the, the space as like a ghost and also starts to cry and he's been crying for a very long time and they aren't they need to merge together actually these two actually need to come together and to become one and not two this is really intense. I can feel it in my own heart. And I've helped this part, his fearful part of himself, learn to love and accept himself as a man, actually. Um, and when I say as a man, um, it's like uh, we have faults. We are only human kind of thing. So he can see himself as a man. Um, and that's okay. And so this part of him has just been crying for a really long time and it comes back and they're sort of like brothers in a way, although it's the same soul, they're both the, the same, but they're like brothers of each other, um, is what it's like when they come and this sort of ghostly side of himself, the crying, this, and it's an invisible man basically, is holding himself, the part that was dust and washed away and now is becoming a reborn man. The reborn man um, opens his heart and says it is time for us to become one again. And he picks up his staff and he has an actual, like a, just a long staff, just a, a straight long staff. 
it's kind of like a pinkish color, a really light, 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 light color, just a tint of pink on, on it, and then a golden ball at the top. And it's got a, it doesn't um, coil like a spiral, um, it's got in, indentations in it, and he just picks up his staff and uh, he feels reborn. And there's some sort of golden ball around his head as well. And he is now removing that. And I feel the runes disappear from the walls and they become one with his heart. He becomes reborn. And he actually is quite powerful and uh, he takes his staff and um, sort of like he, he like bangs it um, in the air and this whole place dissolves. And he becomes like an energy being in the universe. And he smiles at me and nobody knows what Icole is going to do next. But we've set him free because he is needed to be set free. And so it's sort of like a butterfly that's been in a jar and we let the butterfly go because the butterfly needs to be a part of this world. But Icole isn't necessarily a butterfly, he's different. Uh, he's a, a, like a, a wild card because he could bring a great deal of healing or he could bring chaos. But it, it's actually self-realization that he is uh, bringing to us all as well as to himself. And that's the nature of the universe. It's a self-realizing universe. And there always is going to be the balance of self-discovery, which is going to be riddled with chaos and love. Uh, fear and healing, you know, so, um, and, and, and courage, you know, fear and courage, and, and it's all about self-discovery and healing. It's all about that. He actually uh, smiles and he waves at me and my son, and he turns into a bright star of light, and he's sort of um, like, a, like a shooting star in the sky. He just shoots off, and he actually sends a a beam like waves. I'm like a tidal wave. Waves of golden light and love uh, to us all. <laughs> and he, and in this wave of love, he bows and he says, thank you. Thank you for healing me and bringing me into a wholeness within myself and for setting me free so that I can live again. And that's, that's the end of the story. <laughs> All right. Pretty cool, huh? All right. I'm gonna, I'm a little out of it. I never know what I'm gonna get myself into. Hmm. My son's name is Mason. And uh, Mason, you're awesome. Thank you so much for the suggestion. I really enjoyed it. And I think everybody who watches this video is going to have a really cool takeaway from it and Mason you're a really big inspiration in healing other consciousness in the universe and I hope you feel really proud of yourself all right I want to thank you all for taking the time to explore this message and if any of you are interested in connecting with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Thank you all for watching, and I wish you all a wonderful day.